seen all of you after one week. Hope the previous week was good for all of you. It was good for me too. Again, I'm hoping that the coming week too is good and cheerful, bright for all of us. Okay? So, I hope the concepts are very clear of what I have taught you so far. I hope you are doing the homeworks and showing it to your class teacher. If not, you can start showing it to your respective class teachers. Uh, do you need a quick recap? What did I teach you in the last class? It was about balance of gases. And the two gases are photosynthesis and respiration. Okay? So now I will continue from where I have stopped in the last class. In the last class, it was about the diagram and those three sentences. Now it is about a girl called Sophia who goes to an orchidarium as part of a school tour or a picnic. You know what is an orchidarium? What is it? An orchidarium is a place or a garden where different types of orchids are grow. Orchids are special type of flowering plants. You might have already seen them, seen orchids before. You might have seen it hung in different places in houses as we enter their house. Now these orchids are a special type of plants. Why they are special? What is the speciality of orchids? You know one thing? They do not require soil to grow. Then from where they will get the water to grow? They don't need soil. So what they can do is, they can absorb moisture directly from the atmosphere. They can absorb moisture that is nanover directly from the atmosphere to grow. This is the peculiarity of orchids. Is it clear my dear children? Should I repeat again? Orchids have thick roots. They do not need soil to grow. They can absorb moisture from the atmosphere. Now, some plants, are we all alike in this world? Human beings, some are tall, some are short, some are fat, some are very thin, lean. We are not alike. In the same manner, plants are also not alike in this world. Even plants have differences. You might have studied in the previous classes, you know, short herbs, shrubs and trees. Okay, but in today's class, we are going to focus on a word called nutrition. What is nutrition? You might have heard this word before from your parents or doctors. Are you all having a nutritious diet? What is the meaning of that? Nutrition means the process of obtaining food and utilizing it properly so that we will all grow healthy. Okay? So that is nutrition. Process of obtaining food and utilizing it properly. So this is rainy season. You all take care of your nutritious diet. Okay? Drink uh, water which is boiled. Let it cool and then you can drink. Don't go outside and drink any water that is not boiled. Take care of your health. Nutrition is very important for our health. So in this class, I am going to teach you about the different types of plants on the basis of nutrition. Clear? So the next point is, first I have written on the word orchidarium. It is a place where orchids are grown, various types of orchids. Now the second point on the board is classification of plants on the basis of nutrition. What is classification? Classification means grouping of plants on the basis of how they get the food and how they utilize it. All plants cannot prepare food. There are some plants who have to depend on others. So I will teach you now. Please look at the board and listen carefully. Clear? Now, this is the second point. Classification of plants on the basis of nutrition. So this is plants. And the first type of plant is autotroph. 
AOPO in ROP and chess of the blocks. What is the meaning of this word auto? You all know in auto pictures and you have heard about it. Automatic machine. Auto means self, which can be done by ourselves. Self. Okay? Auto means what? Why I have given examples of rice, mango, cauliflower and all that? Because they can prepare food by themselves. They can carry on photosynthesis. That is auto drop. Okay, so the first type of plant is autotrophs. They can be prepared for by themselves without depending on others. You have to listen to what I am teaching and write the whole table that I showed in the file. Is it clear? So now this is the first type of autotrophs. Okay, now I told you about orchids, isn't it? They too can prepare their own food. They absorb water from the atmosphere. But then these orchids, they belong to a group called Epiphytes. Epiphytes. E P I P H Y T E S. Why they belong to a group called Epiphytes? Because they can prepare their food now, but they need shelter. Shelter means support. Now we all have a shelter, we all have a home, isn't it? They also need a home. So where is their shelter? They need a plant as a tree as shelter, as support. See, I have drawn a tree here. They need some trees or plants to grow. They need just support. Preparing for they can do. Okay? So first is autotroph, they can prepare their food by themselves. Second is epiphytes. They need a plant as support. Now the example for epiphytes is vanda. Vanda is an orchid. Clear? Vanda too has thick roots, but it needs a plant or a tree to grow. Okay, now below, I am going below, below. There is a word called host plant. What is the meaning of host plant? Host plant means the main plant on which the epiphytes grow. Main plant or main tree. To make it clearer, I will tell you the meaning of host tree. Suppose I am inviting all of you to my house for any function, for example, birthday party. So who is the host and who are the guests? I am the host, main person who has invited you. Okay? Another example. Now suppose our school, BSS Gurudam, we always conduct annual day every day and you all come as host. Now who is the host here? Gurugulam school is the host, main organizer, main, uh, what should I say, the main thing responsible behind the function or the main person, main organization. It can be anything. Clearer now, host means the main plant who is enabling the other plants to survive. Helping others. Okay? Is it clear? Okay. So this is the post plant meaning I have written here. Main plant. Example I have drawn a tree. Now this vanda will grow over this tree just for support. Is it clear? So such plants are called as epiphytes. Now moving further. There is one more group called parasites. You know what are parasites? They do not prepare food by themselves. I mean they have to depend on other plants. They need a host plant. This vanda, will it affect the host plant? No, it is not affecting it adversely. It will not affect it adversely means dangerously. This word is very near book. It just needs shelter. But parasites are not like that. They harm the host plant. How? Listen carefully. These parasites, okay, uh, you know mosquitoes, they come and sit around our arms, our body. What they do? They just come and sit? No. They suck up our blood. Our body produces blood and they coolly suck the blood in it. Kashta put it in the umbrella body of blood. And they suck it to the parasites. Okay? Machulla will put it to the bottom of it. So now we are coming back to plants. Okay? This is just for your understanding. So parasites are again divided into two types. The first is semi-parasite and the second is total parasites. So the first subdivision under parasite is semi-parasite. Now what is semi? Semi, see you all have heard about circle. 
the half of the circle is called semicircle. The half, this portion of the circle is called semicircle. It is half. Why this word semi here? Because these semi parasites, what they do? They prepare their food, but how? They take the water and minerals from the host plant. Only half the work is done. Is it clear? They take the water and minerals from the host plant and then they can easily prepare. Okay? So the example for semi parasite is the vantus. In Malayalam it is called as Ettikkanni. You might have seen it grows on mango trees. This Levantus, it prepares its food but it absorbs all the water and minerals from the trees on which it grows. So it is semi-parasite. Pagdi vanya vichy. Pagdi host plant. Clear? Now the next foundation that comes on the parasite that is total parasite. Total means what? Completely. Now we got an idea. Total parasite. Example of the very very important children examples every year there are questions based on this topic so the examples are Kaskota and Rafflesia I first tell you what is Kaskota it is a yellowish green climber climber means what climbs on what on a host plant here Rafflesia is the largest flowering plant flower in this world Rafflesia these two are total parasites. Why they are total parasites? Because they totally absorb the whole food from the host plant. Power host plant to put a lot of them. You will go like this. You will have to put a lot of them in the industry. I hope you all are not like that to help your mothers, isn't it? Whatever your mothers prepare, help them. And don't show any disrespect towards food. Whatever is there in front of us. Thank God we all are getting it. There are some children who don't get food children. So don't forget. Okay. So Kasuda and Rafflesia, they belong to the category called total parasites because they absorb the food totally from the host plant. Okay. Kasuda and Rafflesia. See, I have written here total food is absorbed. And there are figures in the textbook. All these figures, after I complete the lesson, I will show you. Okay, you just go through all the figures. You will completely, you will thoroughly have an idea about these uh, figures. And since I have taught you, you will know it better. So, first is autotroph. They can prepare their food by themselves. Second is epiphytes. They prepare food, but they need plants for support. One guy is example. Parasites. Semi-parasites, total parasites. They prepare food by absorbing water and minerals from the host plant. Total parasites, they totally take the food, all the food from the host plant. Now, the last group is saprophytes. What are those plants? Do they prepare food? Do they totally depend on host plants? No, they are something different. What they do is, they absorb the nutrients from dead and decomposed matter. Dead and decomposed plants and animals. You might have seen mushroom, right? Kuna. That is a sacrifice. Because it grows on decomposed alinya marthana me like a That is a sacrifice. Now the examples I will give was Neosia, Monotropa. Fungi. What is fungi? This is a plural. Okay? Singular it is uh, fungus. I'll tell you. Fungus is what? Popel is under the name. On the pickles and on rotten food you can see white color popel. If you don't use it for many days, if the food gets rotten, you can see the fungus. That fungus is a saprophyte because it absorbs the nutrients from that dead decomposed food. Stale food. Put the girls on that, I will tell you what I want to tell you about. Okay? So these are the examples. Mushroom, fungi, monotropa, neosha, they grow on decomposed matter. Now in the book there is a figure. What they have told us to do is, we have to soak a bread for two days. Soaking means what? We have to keep it for two days. After two days, you can see.
see fungus growing over it on the microscope. You can with the lens also you can see microscope is better. You can see them clearly. Fungus they grow like this. These are fungus. Okay, on the brain. So these fun fungi they grow over rotten things and they get food from that. So they belong to the class of saprophytes. Is it clear? So once again, this classification has to be written in the file. And if you have any doubts, you can call me. Homework is to write all this in the file. Understood, my dear children? So today we learned about nutrition. So I wish all of you a uh, very happy week again. Complete your homeworks. And uh, I'll see you all in the next topic, in the next class. Bye. This is Himalaya Nature saying bye to all of you. Bye.